Okay, we continue look at example number six, right? Um, just to observe the SOP that we use to solve non-homogeneous uh, differential equation. So look at example number six. Then you look at the equation, right? So d square y divided by x square minus three dy dx equal nine. Again, if you see equal to something uh, more than zero and not zero, then it become non-homogeneous. Then you need to use non-homogeneous method and recall the table that uh, we mentioned in the previous lecture. Then you're given x equals something, y equals something, a divided, uh, sorry, dy over dx equals zero. This one is to find the a and b in the later section. Okay, step number one. Step number one, you remember what you did in your um, homogeneous uh, equation. Remember the, the your class classmate. Eh? So the first one, you copy the question and then you remember Nizam. So Nizam always talk about D format. Okay, you change this one. All right, you change this one to um, this format. Sorry, I reply. Uh, Message, huh? Okay, you write in the D format. If you compare this one, the, the answer that you get will be D square because the first one is one, right? You get D square. Minus, you copy, you get 3, right? Minus 3. And then this one is D. There's no, there's no C there. There's no C. But you have to write the C because we're going to use the ABC to calculate the second part. We have to calculate the Shakil uh, part. Huh? I mean, the B squared minus 4 AT, the second part. So once you write in the D format, the D format, the next part will be solve the bracket format. Uh, Solve the bracket portion where you call, uh, you recall what Shakir do. Huh? Shakir will calculate the quadratic equation. Okay, so one m square minus three m plus zero equals zero. Basically, you're calculating the quadratic equation. Uh, Shakir task is to find a, b, c, and then put them into quadratic equation. Okay, uh, in this case, you just factor lah. All right, you don't need to use the quadratic equation. All right. In this case, you know that your m is 0 and 3. All right. uh, or you can use the quadratic equation. I right. show you the previous example. Uh, this one. Okay. This is the equation that we're talking about. M or X, X equal to minus B plus minus square root B square minus 4AC divided by 2A to find your M. So uh, in our example six just now, we, we don't, we do not use the, the B square uh, minus B plus minus that one is because it's a simple factorization, right? Basically, it's m and bracket m minus 3. So your m is 0 and 3. So this is the two, two different uh, root or two different uh, solution. So it's fall under the first category. So the next part you think about uh, Edmund. So Edmund is to choose the correct uh, standard equation here. So if it fall under the first one, what you do, you just copy the equation for the first category, which give you the y equal to a something, b something. And you decide what is your alpha, what is your beta. Again, in this case, both positive. So the lowest one you put to the front, the higher one you put to the back. And remember, this is a, this is a non-homogeneous uh, equation. What do you do when it comes to non-homogeneous Remember to change your y become u. Remember to change your y become u and you substitute your alpha 
updated your beta, the first, the first half, you already get marks already. This is the first stage, get your U. Any questions so far? Shakir, you okay? Okay, sir. Right. Now, up to this stage, we're still at the, it's like a homogeneous solving problem. But now, you only need to change the, become U, huh? because this question is non-homogeneous. So, you solve the first part already. You get your U already. Then, we solve for the V. Okay, solve for the V. The V is focused on the Fx with its focus on the right-hand side. So if you compare side by side, yeah, the red color and the green color, you only focus on the right-hand side. So your fx equal to 9. So fx equal to 9. After you write this one, you refer to the encyclopedia. Oh, no, sorry, you recite to the, to the table. Uh, you refer to table 51.1. What is the table? Okay, so this one we've seen before. Huh? We choose the first one because this is the this is the first uh, this is the constant. First one is constant. Uh, in the table, you choose the first one because your fx equal to nine is a constant. Huh? So fx equal to this one. Equal fx equal to nine. So we pick the first one. Now we want to decide whether it is you. You want to use the simple case or the more complex case. You look side by side, and then you read what is on the side here. V equal to kx when when your cf contain a constant. Read carefully, yeah. You use this side of the table. V equal to kx when your CF, which is your U, inside your U just now, contain a constant. This is your U just now. Do you have a constant? The answer is yes, because A, E power 0 is 1. Right? A, uh, sorry, A, uh, sorry, the E power 0 is 1, so 1 times A is constant. So the first part is constant. So, in this case, your V, you use this one and not the previous one. Eh? So, this is another example. You need to check always and not always use the more simple case. Sometimes you need to refer to the requirement here. Okay. So, in this case, we use V equal to Kx. Next steps is to change, you copy this one. You copy this one to your new page and change the y become v. Okay? You change your y become v. You copy the whole set, put in here, change your y become v. After that, you substitute what is your v from the table. Your v equal to kx. After that, you do this step already. You do differentiation because why? Because the inside here, there's a differentiation there that you need to do. Double differentiation of kx, single differentiation of kx, and zero kx. Okay, we do the first one first. Okay, now focus on kx and do differentiation because your because this equation is double differentiation of kx, uh, d over kx, right? So I start with the first one first, more, more, more easier. You look at kx. When you differentiate kx, first time, you take this one, differentiate over x, you, you get k, right? Nizam, you agree? You agree? First time, you, I mean the first differentiation, you, you differentiate kx, you get k, right? Yeah. Then you double differentiation. You differentiate one more time. What do you get? Zero. Huh? So k is a constant value. Okay, now you substitute this value inside this equation. d square kx equal to zero plus minus three d kx. You know that your kx equal to k. So 
minus 3k, 0 multiplied by k, you get 0, equal 9. The whole equation, okay, the whole equation, you get 0 minus 3k equal 9. Edmund, you understand why you get 0 minus k equal 9? Please, uh. You understand or not? Oh, yes, sir. I understand. Okay, Edmund, explain why you get zero here. Why you get minus 3k here? Chakil, can you explain why you get 0 here? Why you get negative k there? Are you there? Shakil, can you explain how you get zero here? How you get minus three here? Calling for Shakil. Explain why you get zero here, why you get negative k here, equal nine. Uh, we follow the uh, the, like, the the first equation, right? Yes, sir. Uh, the yeah, the square, uh, a d square, and then the <coughs> since you already got the uh, constant for each. Uh, Variable, so you just insert, you just you substitute in the uh, equation. Shaki, you explain how you get this equation, how you get zero. You mentioned about this one, right? Uh, how you get zero inside here? Which one is zero? Can you explain why you get zero here? How you get zero here? Zero because of D square. Where? Yeah, the long one. D square kx equal to zero, right? So you put it from mm. there. Okay, then this one? How you get 3k? The one 3d, uh, you put kx, you put it in. So 3d, the k, to differentiate, become 3k. So, okay, correct, correct huh, Nizam? So, how you arrive at this one? You look at this equation. You already substitute your V into Kx. How you get Kx from the table? V equal to Kx. How you get your V equal to Kx? You modify from this equation. You take this equation, you put into a new space here, Substitute your y equal to v. And then ask yourself, what is v? v you read from this table, v equal to kx. Substitute kx. What is your fx? Your fx equal to 9. What is this equation means to you? 1d square kx. 
minus 3d kx, 0 kx equal to 9. You just expand this equation. This one multiply by this one, plus this one multiply by this one, plus this one multiply by this one equal 9. You do the differentiation of what? Differentiation of kx. Maybe you cannot see this one first. You can do first differentiation. What is dkx? What is dkx? D is first derivation. So kx, you do you, you differentiation of your kx, you get k. You differentiate two times. K is a constant, you get zero. You look back as a d. Right? So you have d square, you have d. So 1 kx equal to 0 minus 3 d kx. You take 3 multiplied by k, you get minus 3x. 0 multiplied by kx, you get 0 equal 9. Edmund, do you get that? Yes, sir. Can you explain how you get zero, Edmund? Uh, the d squared is differentiate the ks. Hmm? Uh, one d squared become a zero. And the gk is... All right. So you know it's from here. All right. So you simplify. What is your k? Minus 3k equal to 9. Edmund, explain how you get k equal to minus 3. Uh, 9 over negative 3 become negative 3. Okay. So, you know what is your k. Look back at the, uh, your v. Your v equal to kx. So what is your V, Edmund? Your new value of your V equal what? Negative 3x. Your new value V equal to negative 3x. Your final answer, you just combine the U and V together. Final answer, very easy. You just do like Lego. Combine U and V together. You get the full mark already. You get your u equal to this one. V equal to this one. Okay, V equal to this one. Combine u and v to get full mark for this answer. Okay, try to observe the pattern or the method that we use throughout the exercise. It's always same. The method always same. Okay. Uh, let's look at another example. Apologize for all the I uh, forget to hide all the this one, but let's uh, go along. All right. Uh, okay, the next one. We we solve almost 80% of the question already, but we haven't solved what is our A and B. So how to get your A and B? You use X, Y, and dy dx value to find what is your A and B. You have your Y equation already. You can differentiate your dy dx first this equation right so i will not go deep into how to do differentiation or dy dx you do the differentiation then you substitute your y and x inside there okay for this example i substitute my y zero inside my y so y zero okay y zero x zero x zero I get what is my A plus B. I get my first equation. Second equation, you need to use dy dx, which means you need to differentiate this one. Okay. Nizam, can you tell us what is dy dx of this equation? What is the answer for if you dy dx, you use this equation, what do you get? dy dx equal to what? This one become what? Zero. Zero. This one? Oh, this one a bit a bit complex a bit lah. Uh, so this uh, not not complex, uh, but quite easy. <laughs> this one is a constant value. 
This one is E something. So what, what do you do? So three, three E. What? Uh -huh. Three E. Copy back, three. copy back. Oh yeah, E because that's E. So copy yeah, yeah. Back. Copy back three, what you see. Three, only, you, only you go inside there and then pull the number out. Three, okay, three, yeah. Yeah, then this one become three. Lah. Uh, okay. Uh, so this is the first equation from substitution. Then you do dy dx, you get 3b e power 3x minus 3. And then the question gives you dy dx equals 0. So the equation equals 0. You can find your b. Once you find your b, substitute back here, you find your a. Make sense? I want you guys to try to understand the the logic behind. Don't chase after all these numbers. Huh? Try to see the pattern, the way we, we solve it. Always the same. Okay, from here we get our B. Your B equal to 1, substitute back here, you'll find what is your A. Your A is minus 1. What you do, you substitute A and B inside here. You get full mark already. Okay. So this is the final answer. After you substitute your a and B inside. And be careful on the positive negative sign. Huh? There's a negative for the A. And when you copy, don't left out the back one. Huh? Okay, let's do one more example. Example 7. Huh? You look at the question. There's no equal to 0. So, and you see on the right hand side, on the left hand side, all is Y dy dx square, dy dx, y, you put all to the left hand side. And then right hand side is not zero and it's an equation. So it's for under non-homogeneous. So how do you solve? You combine homogeneous method plus the table method. Okay. So recall how you solve homogeneous. Copy the question. Then think of Nizam. First step, always think of Nizam. Nizam give you the D form. Change this one to D form. Right? Change this one to D form. You will get 2D square minus 11D plus 12 bracket Y and then this one copy. After you done the Nizam method, you think of Shakil. What Shakil do? Shakil purposely, circuit task uh, is to solve the B square minus 4AC or use the equation, quadratic uh, formula, minus B plus minus square root of B square minus 4AC divided by 2A, that one. Okay? Get your quadratic equation, just copy from the bracket. If you're lazy, you just straight away copy the bracket equals zero. Then you find you're using this equation. Important, this step is just to identify what is your A, what is your B, what is your C, and then use this quadratic formula to solve. So your homework, huh? I'm not going to uh, talk about the substitution and all this. You do your homework, you get two answers from the formula. 4 and 3 over 2 um, as your answer. So this one, after you did this one, you do this one, uh, then... You think of Edmund. Ah, sorry, Shakir also have one more step. Means you have three choices compared to this number. Shakir, what is this? Give you which which equation or which set? First one, second one, third one. So we'll use the first one. Ah, huh? you use the first one because you have two real number. Two real number. And Again, two positive number. What is alpha? What is beta? Always start with the low number for alpha, high number for beta. So this is the equation, standard equation for tie together to the first option. Okay. Then remember, this is a non-homogeneous equation. Change this equation become u. Y become u. Substitute your alpha, the low number. Alpha is 3 over 2x plus b e. Copy 4 here. Put your x. Okay? 
this is you. So far, any question? Nizam, you okay? Uh? Up to here. Yeah, we did. Okay, good. We solve U, the next step is solve V. Solve V means you refer to table already. Solve V, second part, you focus on the right hand side of the equation. Huh? So you put side by side and you focus on the right hand side, which is your FX. You write FX equal to right hand side answer, you get one point. Huh? So this is cost you one point. FX equal to this one cost you one point. Or you just copy Fx equal to the right hand side, you get one point. Then you refer to the table. Okay, refer to the table. It's a B, yeah? B table. Let me see if I have the big table. But anyway, uh, the steps, you remember is that you remember the steps. Fx equal to 3 minus 2, you go to the table 15.1, you go shopping on the left hand side. It will give you the similar pattern. This one fall under uh, B. So B give you uh, this one. You modify a little bit, it become V equal to A plus BX from the table. Okay? V equal to this one. Huh? Either way, you can write A plus BX or AX plus B, same. But I use the first one. Right. You write your pattern with the x in front. V equal to ax plus b. You get your v already. Next, what you do, you copy the red color equation to a space that you have in your answer. Change your y become v. Always standard one. You change your y become v. Next step, what you do, substitute your v equal to this one. Okay. Basically, you have a very long equation. You expand this one, you do one by one. Because inside this equation, you see 2d squared multiplied by this one plus minus 11d multiplied by this one plus 11, uh, 12 multiplied by this one equal to this one. It's a very long equation. But what you do, the next step is just you do differentiation on your V. You focus on your V. Okay? Edmund, do the first differentiation for your V. What do you get? You differentiate AX plus B over X. What do you get? Man, are you there? Yes, sir. Differentiate one time. What do you get? Differentiate over x. What do you get? Ax plus b. What do you get? One uh, a plus zero. Oh, equal to one a plus zero. What do you get? A only a. Okay, and only a. Correct. So that is the first integration on this one. What about this one? Double. You uh, you differentiate a. What do you get, Edmund? You differentiate okay. a. You differentiate the constant value. What do you get? Zero. Zero. Correct. So e square zero. D you get a. Of course, normally you do the first differentiation first then you use this value to differentiate again. Once you get these two values, you can substitute inside and you get a new equation. All right? It's a very long equation. All right? So 2d squared equal to 0, 11d equal to a, 12 multiplied by this one, you get this one. This one you copy, you get this one. So you can balance the equation. Okay? You balance the equation. It's a lengthy, yeah. Huh? Balance the equation. Then after you balance the equation, you compare side by side. You compare side by side. What to compare? X compared to X. 
Fakil, can you see what is your 12A equal to? 12A equal to what? Fakil? Nizam, what is 12A equal to? Okay. From best side by side. X, yeah. 12A, 12A X, equal uh, to 3X. Yeah. Same. Uh. So 12AX equal to 3X, right? Mm. My question, 12A, 1, 2, A equal to what? You compare side by side, you have two same thing comparing here. 1, 2, A equal to 3. Three, ah, then you can find A or not? Yeah. What is your A? Three, 12 divided by 3, so 4. Oh, huh? 4? How oh, you get 4? Uh, 12 divided by 3. No. 12A equal to 3. What is your A? 12A equal to 3. <laughs> A, 3 over 12. Ah, 3 over 12. Or uh, simplified become 1, one over... Two. 104. Yes, this is your A. Then you compare another side. This one constant, this one constant, this one you get 2. The next one you compare is this one equal to 2. So minus 11A plus 12B equal to minus 2. You have your A already, substitute inside here, solve for B. Just compare side by side. Just look at them side by side. What is your x? Then look in front of x. Look in front x. Equal them together. Then compare side by side. You will get your b. Eh? So there's a, there's a substitution process here. Eh? You'll get your b. Your b is 1 over 16. Once you get your a and b, what is the purpose of a and b here? Alpha, beta, R. This one. No. A and B here. How you get A and B first is from the V one. Oh, yeah. The small, small. This is a small AB. Eh? Small AB is from the V. So you substitute your A and B value inside V. You get your V already. Then you, you rewrite the equation. Y equal to U plus V. You have your U, you have your V, and you find your, your small A, small B. Substitute everything, put in one equation. You get the final answer. Y equal to U plus A X plus B. This is the final answer. Okay, let's go for one more example. Okay, one more example. You read the question. Solve something, all right? D square minus two dy dx plus y equal to three e power four. So this one is non-homogeneous, and you're given the x, y, and dy dx value. This one is to solve your capital A and capital B. At least you see the map first, huh? you see the strategy first. What you should do first, then later. Huh? Um, okay, so see if you're able to, uh, Memorize. Huh? First step, you look at the equation, identify whether it's homogeneous and non-homogeneous. And you know that no matter it is um, homogeneous and non-homogeneous, the first step always the same. The first few steps always the same. You think of your classmate names. You do the first step first. After that, you get your U. Uh, the, your, your classmate will give you the answer of U. After you get your U, you focus on the right-hand side. Focus on the right hand side. Fx equal to this one. Fx equal to right hand side. Then you compare to the table. Look at the table. You compare side by side. Uh, which category? Uh, which column to go? Uh, then in the table, it will give you one standard answer. You copy the v inside the table. Again, uh, the table give you what is v. Then you calculate what is the v value. After you get the V value, you write back Y equal to U plus V, uh, that you get the answer. 
After that, you solve for dy dx. Substitute, you get your A, capital A, capital B. This is how you solve. Huh? So I'm going to repeat the process for using this example. Copy question. Next, think of your classmate. Uh, Nizam will give you the D factor answer. Uh, convert into D factor. So 1 D square minus 2 D plus 1 bracket. Y equal uh, copy. After that, you think of Shakil. Shakil, what Shakil's task is that he will do the B, uh, D square minus 4 AC or he will use the quadratic equation the minus B something. Huh? Uh, that one to find whether it is which category. Okay, so the quadratic equation is one m square minus two m plus one. So this one you know what is your a, b, and c. I I always prefer to use this one because it's standard, right? You do the calculation. You substitute your b, a, c, a here. You, you, you can see directly from here after you've done the uh, calculation. In this case, you get one. Okay, you get one. Means you have one, one. The answer is one, one. So two same answer. So you, Shakir will tell you which category. Uh, so Shakir have one list, uh, three, three possible. This one fall under second possibility. Second possibility give you one, one answer only, this one y equal to something e beta x and you only have one beta one. so you substitute this one inside here you get your first half equation remember to change the y become u substitute your beta one here you get your u okay you get your u so far that one still under homogeneous steps. Second step, find your V. Second step, when you find your V, think of the table, right? Think of the right hand side of the equation. You write fx equal to what? fx equal to the right hand side. fx equal to 3e power 4x. Then you use this one to look into the table, compare to the table. Okay, you go to this table. You have fx equal to 3e power 4x. Go through the table from the left. You check one by one. Wait, this one equal or not? This one equal or not? This one equal or not? Ah, yeah, this one equal. fx equal to a e power something x. Same pattern. Then you stop here. You stop at this column. Okay, you stop at this column. Then you watch. You have a simple direct case and also a complex case. So you have two possible value of your V. V equal to KE uh, AX or you can use this side. Uh, later I'll show you another one. In this case, we use a simple case first. Okay, this is the U that you get, right? Uh, this is a U that you get. So you're, you're, you, 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 if you read, uh, you read over here. V equal to this one. When EAX, EAX appeared in the uh, CF means in your U here. So at the moment, at the moment, inside here, uh, they, they, you, you share the EX, right? You, sh you share the E1X, but it doesn't belong to this one. Later, I'll, I'll give you one example that will, will meet this criteria. At the moment, we use the Simple case first, huh? right? So you compare side by side. Why you cannot go over here? You you look at your fx. Your fx equal to three e power four x. But inside your u here, your ex power what? One x. So you you don't need to go over here. If your u if your U E power 4x, uh, then it falls under this category. You need to refer to this side. If it is the same. Uh. Uh, so from this point onwards, you need to always compare your U and your Fx. Always check 
your yield and your FX value. Is there any same thing inside or not? If not same, you use a simple case. Okay, huh? It's not same, so use a simple case. So now your V equal to, sorry, your V equal to K E power AX. All right. Now my question is very easy. Huh? You compare side by side. You compare side by side. What is your A in this case? Huh? A E power AX. You compare side by side. What is your A? Huh? Nisa? Uh, sorry, uh, this one may be very small at your side. V equal to K E power A X and your function is 3 E power 4 X. What is your A? My question is. Nizam, what is your A? What is your A X? A X is 1 X. Okay, sorry. Okay, you, you put side by side. Do you see the pattern here? Yeah, I can see. Ah, so, so K will be the 3, E, E, and then A, X will be ah, 4X. So, ah, so your A is what? 4. A is 4. So you copy the equation. V equal to K, E, 4X. Huh? That's why there's a 4X modified here already. Although in the table you see A. But when you come out from the table, you write V equal to K, E power 4x, you carry the k because you want to solve what is your k. How you solve your k? Copy the red color function to another side, change your y, become v, substitute your v equal to this one, and do differentiation. Copy, you copy this one, change your y, become v. Ask yourself, what is the next step? What is the purpose we refer to table? Table gives us V equal to K something. So the next step of V, you substitute this one, the green color one. You substitute green color. And then you already know what is your A, B, and C already just now. So re-substitute your A, B, and C inside here. Or you can just copy the same thing. Only change your Y. Or you can straight away change your Y become KE power 4X. And then you do multiplication. D square KE something minus 2D, this one, this one, equal to 3E4X. Again, differentiation of KE4X. You differentiate 3, uh, sorry, you differentiate KE4X. First time. First differentiation of KE4X equal to what? I think I want to train Nizam, huh? become expert. Okay, Nizam, try to differentiate this one first time. Uh, 4KE 4X. Correct. The answer is 4KE 4X. First time. Nizam, try second time. D square. What do you get? 16KE 4X. Alright. So EX quite easy one. Huh? You always go inside the exponential, differentiate to the outside okay then the next is just substitution the substitution quite long uh, quite a long equation this one you simplify yes because inside here you still have e power x e power 4x e power 4x you simplify simplify and you simplify Can you simplify further? Can you simplify further? Can you compare? Can you compare side by side what happened to your k? If you look here, la, 9 k e power 4 x equal to 3 e power 4 x. Do you see the same thing? Yeah. 3 e 4 x, 3 e 4 x, 3 equal to 9 k. What is your k? So 9k equal to 3, right? 9k equal to 3, right? So you can answer what is your k already. k equal to 1 over 3. You move your 9 to 
right hand side or you just uh, 9k equal to 3 k equal to 1 over 3 okay substitute back your k into the function just now because your v equal to k e for x substitute your k inside your v you get v equal to 1 over 3 e power 4x you solve for the second part already or non-homogeneous the final answer you take the u plus v you get the answer okay y equal to u plus v you combine your u and v answer you get the answer however you look at the question there is a purpose why the question gives you x equals zero y equals something dy dx something is to solve the big a and big b it's just substitution and do a little bit more on the differentiation. Substitute back, you get two simultaneous equations. Solve for A and B. Okay, I'm not going through the substitution and uh, simplify. Eh? So I'll just show you the, the, the answer here. You get B equal to something. B equal to minus one. You differentiate to get the dy dx using this equation. A very long equation you solve uh, then substitute what is your x what is your y inside there at the end you arrive at a equal to something so from here b and a you get already ask yourself what to do with this a and b substitute inside here your job is done okay substitute your a and b inside here your job is done and this name the final step we call it after you get A and B, we call it particular solution. This is a general solution. This is a particular solution. Okay. General solution, particular solution. Let's try example number nine. Okay. Example number nine. Solve this question by using the similar method. Uh, try to recall, I mean, uh, don't, don't memorize the, the numbers that you see. Yeah? Try to see whether you understand not the step to solve non-homogeneous equation. All right? So, you look at the question. Oh, this one on the left-hand side, not zero. So, it's uh, non-homogeneous. So, the first step, you think the first half of the question or the u, you know that the final answer you look for is y equal to u plus v, right? Uh, so how to find v? Think of your friend, uh, the classroom friend, the name, the steps. You've done all the steps, you get your u. Then after that, how to find v? The right hand side, look at the table, find what is your v. Then you solve the final answer already. In this question, it do not give you what is x, what is y, what is dy, dx. So basically, you solve for the general equation. Okay, now first step, always copy the question. Then, first part is to find the u. Find the u, you think of your classmate. You think of, of the first one, Nizam. Nizam always like to put things in the d form. Okay, so convert this one into a d form. You get 2d squared minus something d minus something blah 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 comma y right hand side copy i think you we repeat this more than 10 times already so you should be able to subconsciously you already know that you sleep also you think about this one already right next after d after nizam you think of shakil shakil will give you three three possibility how to de determine the three de possibility Think of the big equation, the, quadrat uh, the quadratic equation, right? Minus b plus minus square root b square minus 4ac divided by 2a. Uh. Okay, use that one. Right? Get what is your a, what is your b, what is your c? Use this equation. You arrive at something. In this case, you have one number and negative number. Okay, so you have two real number. It fall under the first category. First category, you have the alpha and beta. 
alpha and beta, how to decide if you have positive and negative? Positive one always in front one. Negative always at the back side one. Okay? So, alpha equal to half, 3 over 2, beta equal to negative. And copy the general equation from the previous, from the comparison from the, this one. There are only three standard equations with the cases. Right? So, this one, you get y equal to a something plus b something. Right? This is alpha, this is beta. Right? I didn't write the general equation already. Huh? I straight away substitute already. Next, remember, don't stop here. Change this one to u. Then you solve the first part only. 50% question solved. Okay, now then the next step is to think about the v. Think about the right hand side of the question. Think of the table. Okay. So, compare side by side, write what is your fx? fx equal to the right hand side. Very short step only. This short step gives you one mark. You write fx equal to the right hand side answer, you get one mark in your answer. So, don't skip these steps. fx equal to this one, the right hand side. No matter what you see on the right hand side, you copy only. Lah. Okay, then you get one mark. After that, you use this one, go to the table and do shopping. Okay, uh, for example, I give you already, uh, fx equal to 5e e power something. So you go shopping. Go shopping, hey, c, c is the same. Same pattern. Then again, don't, don't just stop here. Always have a habit to write your u. Write your u. Write your u. Compare side by side. Is there anything same or not? Nah? This is your fx. This is your u. Compare side by side. Is there anything same? Nah? Edmund, do you see anything same between the two equations? Yes, sir. What is the same thing? Uh, a e power 3 over 2s and the uh, 5e power 3 over 2s. Um, here you got you got ca man. Mm. No what? what? What is the same thing? My question is what is the same thing between these two? Uh, 3 over 2. The same thing is e power 3 over 2x, correct? Yes. So when you have the same thing, be careful. Tell yourself something you need to pay attention already. When you compare side by side, there's something similar to between fx and u. Stop there and think. Stop there and think. Is If the same already, don't use this one already. You need to read something here. If use when eax appeared in the first one in your cf cf mean appeared in u so it appeared already this one and this one appeared same when eax two same ex appeared you use the first one and then you read the second one huh? when you use the second one use when eax and x E A X both appear. Do, do, do this one appear? Do your fx have e, e minus x or not? You don't have right. Ah, so you, you cannot use the second one. Use the first one. Is that the idea? Let me know uh, if you need me to explain these steps. Okay, you read uh, you read carefully. You compare fx. Read pattern. Then you read this one. When you need, when you use the first one, when e a x appear in c f, you check what is e a x. Your e a x here is e something e power something. Check f x and u. Is this this one appeared here or not? This case yes. So tick the first one. Then you go to the second one. Second one is when e a x and e uh, x e power a x appeared. Your f x already don't have the x e something already, so it's sure not this one. 
So use the first one. In this case, we use this one. Let me know if you don't understand why you use this one and not this one. Huh? Talk me and let me know if you're not able to tell why use this one huh? and not this one. Let me know. Huh? Don't, don't just let it pass by. Okay. We explain. So you know that in this case, what is your V? Your V equal to KXEAX. Remember what is your A? What is your AX compared to this one? Uh, Nizam, what is the A in this case? What is your A? 3 over 2. Correct. Copy this whole thing into your understreet. So your V equal to KX E3 power 2X. The next step is always the same. What you do? Copy this one. Put here. Change your Y. Become V. Replace your V with this one. Differentiate this one first time. Differentiate this one double, uh, second time. Substitute back. You find what is your V. Okay. Steps. Change your Y to V. Substitute your V in the K form that you read from the table. Next one, focus on this one. Differentiate one time, two time, feedback. So I think this one is some expert already. If you want to know the detail, go and ask Nizam or you can read the slides. So I give you the detail derivation. Uh, this one. A, a, bit, a, bit, a little bit long, so go home and read this one. But today, your my my goal is to repeat until you sleep. You close your eyes. You also know what what to do already. Yeah. You can you can uh, tell your junior what to do already. Okay. Remember is that uh, what is important today class is that I want you to know the method, uh, the strategy. Huh? So you get your D and then you substitute inside. Uh, quite a long long process, huh? Long process, you continue to simplify. You compare side by side, like what you did just now. You get your k, 5k equal to 5. Your k equal to 1. Okay. Now, as you can see here, the steps after substituting. Uh, the steps after substituting the... Substituting the... Okay, y become V, substitute K become inside here, and then you do differentiation, substitute. The objective is to find what is your K after these steps, is to find what is your K. After you find your K, substitute back inside here, you get your V, right? Okay, I'm going to skip all these uh, details. Huh? You can read the slides later. Important is that you know what is the procedure or strategy to solve. Okay, you know your k substitute back here, v equal to x, because your k is 1, so v equal to x e power 3 over 2 x. You know your v, you can solve for the question already, your y equal to u plus v. Okay, your y equal to u plus v. Recall what is your u and v. Just copy the answer back to here, get the full mark already. Okay, a quick question. Why you don't need to solve for A and B in this case? Why you don't need to solve A and B in this case? Shakil, can you explain? Why you don't need to solve the capital A and capital B in this case? Edmund, why you don't need to solve, why, why you don't need to find the capital A, capital B in this case? Uh, because the question is not giving the s equal what and y equal what. And one more, one more. You miss one more information. And e y d s. Correct. Huh? Correct. Uh, very good, huh, Edmund. Because uh, the question do not give you the x equal what, y equal what, and d y d x equal what. So you don't need to solve a b. If the question give you that, uh, then you need to do uh, You need to solve a and b. Okay. That is the. The trick, huh? Okay, at least Edmund, I know. Okay, now you 
you learn something from the lesson from the lesson very good now example number nine i will just maybe i'll go very fast huh? so just to check huh? just to check the, the the method whether you still can follow huh? the method always same one first you think or you check the question you look at the question what kind of uh, second direct, uh, second differential equation it is is this homogeneous or non-homogeneous? You look at the question, you know already, this one is non-homogeneous because on the right-hand side, not equal to zero. Uh, then non-homogeneous, you have two parts to do. Solve U and V. First part, think of your classmate. Second part, solve V, think of the table. Uh, then you combine U and V, you get the final answer. Okay. First part, I only show you the general steps. Huh? The detailed one, you go and read my slides. Important is that you ask yourself, do I know what to do with this question or not? Uh, that is more important. Don't uh, give you a question, then you blank or you don't know what, what, don't know what to start. Uh, then that is the worst case scenario. Okay, first, look at the question and think of how to find the first you, the, the, the first part, you. Think of Nizam. Nizam always like to give answer in D form. Right in the D form, after you write in the D form, you know what is your A, B, and C, then think of Shakir. Shakir like to do the max calculation using the equation. Okay, this is your good friend. So Shakir like to make friends with this one. So minus B plus minus square root B square minus 4AC divided by 2A. You know what is your A, you know what's your B, you know what's your C, substitute inside here. Then you have three cases to consider. Here you get only one answer, means that you get the both same solution. It falls under second scenario. Second scenario will give you this one only. So substitute two inside beta. Remember, when you substitute two inside here, change your y become u. You get the 50% marks already. u equal to something base beta. First part, you solve u. Then the second part, how to solve v. Think of the table. Think of the table and then think of one free mark, uh, one free mark that you can score. How to score the free mark? Write fx equal to something. fx equal to what? Equal to the right-hand side of the equation. fx equal to right-hand side of the equation. Just copy. Just write fx equal to the right-hand side. You, I will give you one mark for that one. Okay? Uh, don't miss these three marks. Huh? For non-homogeneous, you write fx equal to right hand side. I will sure give you one mark. One. Right? So then, after you write fx equal to this one, go to the table. Go to the table. I, I'll help you one more time. You go to the table. Okay. You go to the table. And you write fx and write your u. Write your U. Compare side by side. Compare side by side. And read the question carefully. First, you compare side by side, same or not? You have E 2X inside here because it's a bracket. And first one is X E 2X. Second one. You have B E 2X. Still, you're seeing the 2 E 2X. So it's not, seem you, you found the same thing inside the U. It is not a simple case. So don't look at this column. You look at this column. Check the first one. First one, when E X appeared in CF. Yes, it's appeared. But continue to read the second one. Use when E X and X E. AX appeared in both U. In this case, you have the E2X here. This means this one, mid already. Tick. Then you also see X, E2X in this case. You meet the second criteria. Tick. Tick this one. Okay. Oh, your V, 
your V equal to K X square E to X. Follow by the normal standard procedure. Copy this one, put to your answer sheet. Change the Y, become U. Substitute what is your U. Differentiate what is this one. Double differentiate this one. Substitute inside there. Find what is your K. Find your K, you'll find your V. This one, copy, change your Y to V, substitute your V here. You see D square D, you should know what to do already. It means differentiate this one. Differentiate one time, differentiate second time, substitute inside here, rearrange, then you compare left hand side and right hand side. Okay, I'm going to skip the process. Huh? I give you the detail, but Try to identify the, the the strategy to solve. The detail you can read later on. Okay, quite lengthy lah, huh? So you do all the substitution, comparing both sides, you get this one. Two k e power two x equal to three e two x. Edmund, what is two k equal to? What is your 2k equal to what, Edmund? Uh, 3 over 2. Your k equal to 3 over 2, huh? Correct. Correct. Because my question just now is quite direct. I ask you 2k equal to what? 2k equal to 3. Then k only your answer. k equal to 3 over 2, okay? Uh, how you, after this, what do you do? You get your k, substitute back to your v just now. Your V equal to K something. Substitute your K inside there. You get your V. Solve for the second part. Last part, don't miss it. Last part, just uh, completing the Lego. You have the first Lego, you have the second Lego. Combine them together. Y equal to UV. Combine these two equations. U, substitute here. Plus, this one you copy, you get the answer. Okay? Can so far okay? Everyone good? Okay. All right. So I think we stop at here. We continue um, our class on Monday. Okay. Let me stop the recording.